Hey guys, this is Andrew Wright, and coming to you with another episode of Review the Right Thing. And today we're going to be talking about the badass double feature that is Police Story 1 and 2, brought to us by the Criterion Collection. And they were both written and directed and starring Jackie Chan. Let's get started. I can't wait to dive into these with you guys. Police Story 1 from 1985 is presented to us courtesy of the Criterion Collection on a 4K transfer MPEG-4 ABC encoded 1080p Blu-ray. And it's presented to us in a higher bit rate than Police Story 2. However, we'll get to that when I talk about Police Story 2. The picture on this release looks really great and has cleaned up quite a bit over previous DVD releases. The picture still retains a very nice filmic quality and the color palette appears and looks very organic. Skin textures and close-ups are given an added boost considering the equipment and budget at the time were very limited. Beads of sweat are given an elevated detail on the HD transfer, but close-ups don't benefit as much from the transfer due to the infrequency of them. This film has a lot more wide-angle shots and as previously stated, the limited equipment and budget that they had to work with. We're given three different audio tracks on this Blu-ray release, a 5.1 English dub, which I didn't even bother to watch because I hate dubs, a 5.1 Cantonese track, and a mono Cantonese track. Composer Su Tin Lai has crafted a very 80s driven synth inspired soundtrack with tons of horns and really gives you that oomph, yes, I'm going to go kick ass and save the day. As I stated, I didn't even bother to listen to the English 5.1 dub, so the original mono mix was what I actually watched the full movie in. Compared to the 5.1 mix, the original mono track boasts a slightly brighter and louder dialogue track, but the soundtrack is given that extra clarity and oomph. Sound effects really boom on this track. Gunshots, kicks, and breaking glass, etc. all sound very natural and mix well throughout the overall track. After viewing the movie throughout once, I clicked over to the 5.1 track and did a little comparison back and forth. The 5.1 track definitely has a little bit flatter of a mix when it comes to the actual soundtrack. Uh, didn't, it wasn't as bright and booming as it was on the mono soundtrack. I do, however, think dialogue sounded a tad better it was definitely quieter, uh, but I almost feel like the bright, kind of harsh sound of the mono track didn't sound as good after listening to the 5.1, but the 5.1 is really quiet. And then the sound effects sound really good as well, breaking glass, kicks, etc. all sound really good, if not a tad better. However, they almost sound compressed, so they don't sound as natural as the mono track, so I definitely preferred the mono track over the three because obviously I don't watch English dubbed. I just prefer to watch it in the original language. I don't like when mouths don't match what they're saying and it just bugs me. I hate it. The Blu-ray has tons of extras that'll satisfy the biggest special feature buffs. First off is Jackie Chan, My Stunts. This feature talks to Jackie Chan and his stunt team in their stunt lab and how they break down different stunts for different movies. He goes into some depth about different stunts pulled off throughout different parts of his career and also talks a little bit about the single greatest stunt of all time, which is him going down that giant pole of seven floors in the mall at the end of Police Story 1. This feature runs about 64 minutes. Next up is a 13 minute interview with Edgar Wright and him talking about his appreciation and fascination with Jackie Chan going from him as a child to growing up into Hollywood, where he actually eventually got to work with a stunt coordinator that worked on set with Edgar Wright during Baby Driver and Scott Pilgrim, and who has also worked with Jackie Chan quite extensively. Next up is a 36-minute featurette Talk House podcast in which Edgar Wright interviews Jackie Chan for the first time at a film festival. This is basically just expanded of the 13-minute featurette with Edgar Wright, but he now gets to talk to Jackie Chan directly about some of the things that he had mentioned in the 13-minute featurette where it was just an interview with himself. Following this, a 13-minute featurette called Becoming Jackie Chan with film scholar Grady Hendrix, and he goes over how Jackie Chan basically throughout his career, uh, the different movies that he plays in and acts in and the different experiences that he got and then how he found his identity as an actor in Hollywood. He basically discovered that he wanted to be the everyman the guy that is not perfect, he's not the 80s action hero like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis, Sylvester Stallone, that can just go through and they're like a tank and they just go through and kick ass. Jackie Chan is vulnerable and gets hurt like a normal person. 
And so that is the character he wanted to play, and it makes him more relatable to the audience. There's a really nice 12-minute TV special called King, The King vs. Kings 2, in which the younger generation of his Jackie Chan stunt team, as well as the older generation that worked with him back in the 70s and 80s, give appreciation to him after he gets his Oscar. It's a really heartfelt 12-minute featurette that was hosted on television. Finally, we have two trailers, the original trailer and the Janus re-release trailer, which has been given that extra boost in clarity that the HD transfer of the Blu-ray received. Next up, Police Story 2, released in 1988, also written, starring, and directed by Jackie Chan. However, also co-written by Paul B. Clay, who basically only had one other writing credit that I was able to find, and basically had most of his career in the sound department in films later on which may have added to the fact that this movie is definitely not as good as the first one. It kind of suffers from some really bad plot holes. They basically tried to go one direction and another at the same time. There's two separate sets of bad guys. One of the sets of bad guys doesn't even matter, but that doesn't matter. We're not reviewing the movie. I still very much enjoyed the movie. I highly suggest getting this box set, regardless of the fact that the plot in the second movie isn't as good. The action sequences and everything are just as pulse-pounding and amazing. Jackie Chan and their stunt team are clearly in a league of their own, and so there's no reason to not watch it. But however, it's definitely not as entertaining as the first movie. The first movie actually has a pretty strong plot overall. However, it's it might be kind of cliche and pull from a lot of different kind of uh, police story tropes, but it's overall a very convincing story, and I liked it a lot. Uh, however, the second one, like I said, kind of takes a little bit of a nosedive, but everything else is still amazing, and so it doesn't take a, a lot away from the movie, and it's still worth definitely sitting through and watching it. As I mentioned in the, bit, in the beginning of this video, Police Story 2 is also presented to us courtesy of the Criterion Collection on an MPEG-4 AVC encoded 1080p Blu-ray. However, it's presented to us at a lower bit rate, which I feel like could add to the difference in the picture quality on this release. I feel like very well lit interior scenes and exterior daylit scenes look really good. However, there's a lot of this movie that are in very dark corridors, and so the picture quality doesn't look as good as the first movie does. It could just be my eyes, but I feel like that's probably a result of the lower bitrate. The picture does seem a tad softer. However, I felt the Blu-ray was still given a significant boost in quality and was overall an added improvement over the previous DVD releases. Close-ups are given an added boost in clarity as well as skin textures during those close-up shots are rendered pretty good. The color palette also remains organic. It's part of the special features, however, I'll mention it now. There is a Hong Kong version, or re-release, I guess, on this Blu-ray. I only popped it on for about a minute. It does seem to have the same uh, audio tracks as the regular Blu-ray does, or the regular cut of the movie does. Picture quality seems about the same as well, too. However, I don't know if there's any difference in the scenes. Runtime appeared to be the same at I think an hour and 42 minutes. Now I gotta look it up, but it's something around there. So either way, I'm pretty sure both runtimes were pretty much the same. Audio tracks, tracks seem about the same. There's a mono Cantonese track, which I feel like basically is a similar track to the Police Story 1 version. I think that this is definitely the better sounding track. Has the same pros and cons, I would say, overall as the first track but again, in my opinion, is the stronger of the three tracks. There's also a 5.1 English track, which again, I don't like. And there's also a 5.1 Cantonese track, which I feel like has the same pros and cons as the Police Story 1 version. And so I just prefer the mono track on both releases. As in the first Police Story release, there is loads of bonus features for those who are special feature buffs. First off includes a 41 minute featurette, Son of the Incredibly Strange Film Show, hosted by Jonathan Ross, and is basically a documentary about Chan and how he developed his persona in Hollywood. Very similar to the Edgar Wright interview where he talks about the same thing, or the Grady Hendrix interview where he talks about very similar things. Jackie Chan has this very relatable, likable guy persona, 
that he likes to play in all of his movies. And that's kind of the niche that he has gone for. And it really works for him. He's just a likable guy. Uh, in this 41 minute featurette is also some interviews with Jackie Chan, Willie Chan, his manager, and also Maggie Chung. On this Police Story Blu-ray, there is also another interview with Grady Hendrix called Reinventing Action. However, this one, instead of going over Jackie Chan and what how he kind of became who he is, this more or less talks about the action movies at the time, what he did to change how action movies were done, which was basically him doing his own stunts a lot of the time. It made it so that audiences basically could relate to him more because he's a normal guy standing up there, vulnerable, getting hurt, and he is doing his own stunts. Uh, this was not done in the rest of the industry, so it very much changed up the game. It really talks about his brand of comedy and how he was inspired by people like Harold Lloyd, Charlie Chaplin, or Buster Keaton. Following this is a short little 15 minute featurette called Benny Lai, who was a martial artist that worked with Jackie Chan and his team during the stent of the 80s when he was working on Police Story 1 and 2, Project A, as well as some others. He was the bad guy in Police Story 2, so it's just more or less an interview with him kind of talking about how it was like to work with Chan and the rest of his stunt team, the experience that his martial arts background brought with him to the fight choreography is really interesting. Next is a little 15 minute featurette titled Opera de Peking a Paris, which basically is just a little featurette going into the, the Peking opera school that he was a part of and more or less the rigorous training and responsibilities that he would have probably been responsible for as a youth in this opera uh, that he spent a lot of time with Sammo Hung and a couple other guys from uh, Chinese martial arts movies were all part of this old opera. I don't recall if any of the scenes were him. I was kind of taking my notes and watching at the same time. I didn't see any blips where it was showing Jackie Chan, so I think it was just a little featurette of just some old 60s footage from this French television series that basically just showed everything that the uh, Peking school opera school did back then. Also included, we have a little four minute stunt reel, which is basically just scenes from his career, different movies, uh, different stunts that he has done, some before the, they were finished into the movie, so a lot of practice stunts, stunts where he even was hurt and injured, directing his stunt team on how he wanted them to execute the stunts so that they weren't hurt, different things like that. It was a really cool short film short four minute featurette. And last we have just one original trailer for the movie from 1988 when it premiered. So overall I think this Blu-ray really packs a punch. Overall picture quality for the first release is really good. Picture quality for the second release is not as good but still is given some extra boosts over the original DVD releases. Sound for both is pretty amazing. I have no qualms about that at all. Uh, a couple of the things I had said about the mono soundtrack were just comparatively to the 5.1. The dialogue just seems a little bit more rough. Um, however, it is a little bit louder. It's clearer. It comes through the mix a little bit clearer. Sounds better in the overall mix of everything. Like I said, the soundtrack sounds better in the mono mix. The sound effects sound better in the mono mix. So overall, there's not really any gripes about that. So... I think the audio is great. It does give you the three choices, and obviously my ears are different than everybody else's. So you may really like the 5.1 mix. You may not even want to watch this movie in its original subtitled format. You might want to watch it in the 5.1 dub. So either way, this release gives you plenty of options, which is really awesome. So I give that high scores there. Packaging is amazing on this release. Gives you tons of special features. I think this, I think Criterion really knocked it out of the park with this release. And I'm happy to have it in the collection. Thanks again for watching. And if you guys like what you see here, click subscribe over here. Watch some more content from me. I'm gonna be keep I'm gonna continue to upload stuff periodically, as always. Not sure what I'm gonna be working on next. It's kind of up in the air. It just kind of always comes to me. I feel inspired by something, whether it be a movie that I have just purchased on Blu-ray and we're elated with how it came out and the presentation and all the features or a CD that I can that came out I'm just really into 
And so it's always just up in the air. However, you will continue to see more content. So please, if you like it, subscribe and you can enjoy more Review the Right Thing. Thanks again. Thank you.